Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about dry and when it doesn't apply. So let's get into it. So the question in question was pretty much, Frederick, is there any time when the dry or don't repeat yourself principle doesn't apply? And the short answer is yes, whenever you have duplication that is duplicated by coincidence rather than by inherent association. Let me explain that. It sounds fancy, but let's just unpack that. So what I will tell you is that when you apply the dry principle, and in the beginning, you may do what I did when I was just starting out. And I did the dumbest thing of them all. And that was that I figured that, okay, the principle states that I shouldn't repeat myself. And then I got all philosophical about it. And I thought, oh, okay, let's start easy. Let's just keep it simple to begin with and take every string in the entire system and put that in a variable so that I never duplicate that string, which is a reasonable thing to do. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not too out there. But after that, I realized that, well, I am pretty much doing these computations over and over again. I'm adding a few numbers here. I have a few Boolean checks and so forth. And so I broke that into a function that I try to name well and so forth. And I kind of continued this process without thinking so much about the code that I was writing. And I reached a point when I realized that now I have one set of logic that is not associated with another set of logic, but I have tied these two things together by abstracting away and removing duplication to the point where now both of these pieces of logic are pretty hard to understand. There's a lot of abstraction going on because if you take the dry principle as far as you can, well, then your code is going to be quite, quite grossly affected you will see a massive difference in how you have to write code if you're never supposed to repeat yourself, depending on how zealous you are about the philosophical idea of not repeating yourself. Because if you're never supposed to repeat yourself, then you pretty much have to write very, very abstract code that complicates the whole code base just for the sake of not repeating yourself. Now, that is not a good idea. That's not a good idea at all. And the reason why it's not a good idea because, is because it's actually compromising something that is more important than duplication. And what's more important than duplication is comprehension. If your code turns out to be incomprehensible, or very sophisticated or advanced when it doesn't have to be, you're actually introducing more complexity at the, cost, at the expense of um, you, well, you are you are reducing your duplication at the expense of comprehension. And that is a very bad trade. It's an enormously bad trade. If you have, I like to say that when people talk about boilerplate, I like to say that I prefer boilerplate over sophisticated advanced solutions. And the reason is very simple because boilerplate is just boring to write. That's it. It's not complicated. It's never going to break. It's going to scale forever. It's just going to take a lot of time to do so. While as if you have a really advanced and sophisticated optimization solution that may be error prone or so forth, if it doesn't really work out, it's actually going to delay you much more than the boilerplate could possible well, within reason, of course. Well, because if you have that mindset, if you think of everything as a time investment, well, then the goal of not repeating yourself is that you create a situation where if you do the same thing over and over and over, and you have to do that change in multiple places every time you change one thing, that's a good candidate for refactoring. But if you are tying things together that are not associated, where one thing could change without the other thing changing, but it's just that they so happen to use the same words, or the same string or something like that, then you don't really have to tie them together. And I found myself very quickly in a situation where my abstract fancy, fancy code, well, I had to rewrite it again because I had the scope had changed on one of my features. And at the time of writing my code, these things were sort of connected. But I very quickly realized that, oh, I just changed a single thing about this code over here. 
And now I have to write all that stuff that I abstracted away into a very nice reusable um, uh, module. Well, that has to be broken out now again and rewritten from scratch pretty much because the scope changed a little bit and these things are not tied together. So now I mean in a worse situation because now I have to redo the work so that my code works for this case and I'm left with the other module that now has a really generic, super advanced, dumb th piece of logic that I wrote to optimize for both cases. Does that make sense to you? I hope it makes sense. Because if I had just kept these things as they were with that little, little duplication, they would have actually, both pieces of logic would have stayed more comprehensible. But now I just abstracted away and made everything more sophisticated and then something just changed ever so slightly, not in both places, just in one place. And that means that now only one of these pieces of logic on top of me, of course, write, rewriting the whole thing has comprehensible, uh, a comprehensible solution. And the other one has a super optimized solution that in no way helps anybody outside of that, that module. So I should if I was a good scout or a, a good camper, I would have thrown away the work for that module as well and rewritten it in uh, once again to make that code easier to understand, which would have left me in exactly the same place that I started in. So what I want you to take away from this is that the times that you don't want to use the dry principle is when you aren't certain that you're going to change more than one place every single time something changes. What I mean by that is that don't be too quick to make things generic because generic, the more generic you get, the more complicated it becomes to understand what's going on. And if you are too, if you're too ambitious with following practices such as the dry principle, you might end up in the situation that I was in, where you have two pieces of logic that really have nothing to do with each other. It's just that in your mind, they have things to do with each other. Uh, and you know that they're, they are not associated when you, f you know that you can change one thing without necessarily having to change the other, which is very often the case. But in your mind, they are doing the same thing and you shouldn't repeat yourself. Now you abstract that away and all of a sudden something changes about but one of these pieces of logic and now you have to start all over again or just rewrite a duplicate the generic logic into something specific for one of these pieces of logic and just live with the fact that you now have a super sophisticated advanced piece of code that doesn't it doesn't help with any removing any duplication it's just a worse implementation for the piece of logic that you didn't have to change keep these things with you always think in terms of are these two things connected? Then you can abstract them and not repeat yourself. But if they are no, in no way connected to each other and they can change independently, don't try. Let them live their lives. It's much better to let two pieces of logic that are not associated develop organically and then find a situation where, oh, these two things are absolutely connected. Well then, sure, apply the dry principle. Have a great day.